Don't know about you, but uh, I like to keep to a halal diet, if at all possible. Look, dietary laws, uh, people who are Jewish, kosher, Muslim, halal, that, that's fine. It, it, it's a fundamental right, for goodness sake. But w when those dietary conditions are imposed, sometimes surreptitiously, on the rest of the population, we have a problem. We may have. A problem. Mark Labouy uh, joins us, director of Tipping Point, uh, which is, is a, it, it's a, a blog, a, a website, Mark? Yeah, it's like a web magazine uh, where we basically uh, demonstrate how the Islamists uh, are working, their means and methods to be able to move forward their, uh, their agenda. So it has to be in Quebec. If you do that in Ontario, there'll probably be a Human Rights Commission coming down on you. Well, we're, uh, we're not targeting uh, the, gener uh, the, uh, the, the religion in general. We're targeting organizations as such and individuals that are leader in the leadership of these organizations. Good for you. Well done. Now, in this case, again, people wanting halal diet, that's their, their fundamental right in any free country. But this goes much further. This is non-Muslims who are having halal food and not being aware of it? Uh, yes, it's partly uh, one of the uh, one of the issues that was brought out. And if you want, we can we can do a little bit of track back when the the whole um, certification issue came out about two weeks ago. There was a TV show, uh, Mario Dumont's TV show, brought up a very very fundamental question. It was not so much about the validity of doing the uh, the ritual uh, type of slaughtering, but much more yes, uh, the identification on the tags. But also the other question was, where is the money going? Where is, once the slaughterhouse is giving the money to the certification agency, where is that money going? And this is what we've done. We've, we've done an extensive research to be able to find out that the main leading uh, certification, halal certification body, basically uh, the money does end up into the Hamas or terrorist organization fund collector. My golly. So... Just to get this straight, um, halal slaughter and hal halal identified food, which I assume in some form of, of blessing and Islamic law, is being sold to all sorts of people, Muslim and non-Muslim. And the money that, that has to be paid for the certification and slaughter is then going to extremist terrorist organizations. Yes. Now, what's happening, just to, to, to make sure, there's, there's a, uh, an organization called the Muslim Association of Canada who basically took control of the certification agency uh, uh, that basically most of the slaughterhouse that were, in, uh, that were, uh, that were targeted by, by the, this news, and one of them was Halimel, is basically took control of this, uh, of this certifi halal certification agency. Then afterwards, what happened is, what we've discovered is that MAC received front, uh, funds upstream a couple of years ago from a, uh, an organization that has, um, that has this charity uh, status revoked because they had linked to Al-Qaeda. Right. And then later on downstream, what we've discovered is that MAC have um, um, transferred funds to uh, another organization called Irfan Canada, who also has its uh, charitable status revoked about a year ago because they, uh, they according to Revenue Canada, basically they, they've transferred about $15 million dollars to uh, Hamas, the organization, uh, the terrorist organization Hamas. So what we're seeing is that the money is going from the slaughterhouse to the Halal Certification Agency. The Halal Certification Agency is controlled by the MAC, and the MAC has a history, and it's all documented in public domain information. Uh, the MAC basically has transferred fund to uh, the Hamas fund collector. Also, the MAC, uh, in the early 2000, about, I think it might, it might be about 2004, right after Canada has put Hamas on the list of terrorist organization, Hama, uh, the MAC also, through a press release, defended uh, the Hamas. Right. Okay, so Muslim Association of Canada is responsible for halal slaughter. Uh, what percentage of, of the meat that's sold in Quebec what will be halal? Well, for now, what we know is with the Halimel, according to the spokesperson of Halimel, the, one of the slaughterhouses, the chicken-based slaughterhouses, they now have an operation, that, and, and he basically said that was 40% of the, uh, the, the, the chicken that was being slaughtered is being uh, uh, in an environment where they, they're totally approved by, by the certification agency. Basically, it's 40% of their uh, chicken that is being slaughtered in Quebec that is supposed to be uh, halal approved, according to, uh, according to the standard of this. Uh, so 40% so just, so of the meat sold to all Quebecers? It's by, halal approved. By Ali Mel. Now, I don't know about the... Oh, I see. Uh, most, uh, but, Ali Mel. but there's other slaughterhouses, which basically their operation is, is 100%. So... A non-Muslim Quebecer who goes to, to, to buy meat in, in a store, 
What are the chances that they will buy meat that is halal slaughtered? If we're talking about halal product, it could be about 40%. Uh, the chance for, for uh, minimal. There's some, some areas, what they say is they, they only uh, identify under labeling the products uh, when the clients request the, the, the seal, the halal seal. Right. Uh, however, uh, a, a nimam does come and bless the, uh, the, uh, uh, bless the, 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 the slaughtering, the, the meat. Uh, inside uh, before each shift, according to what they're saying. So that means all the uh, all the the chicken in that specific facility seems to be uh, uh, blessed with uh, with the seal of approval halal. This this does bring up one question. One of them is that we're having prisons, we're maybe having military bases, we're having other public institution that are purchasing with huge quantity. Halal approved by this specific uh, certification agency uh, meat that are being maybe most likely uh, we're, f we're seeing that the money trail did lead to a terrorist organization fund collector. So you, you could have Canadian soldiers in Quebec uh, indirectly paying for weapons that they will then have to fight against when they uh, serve. It, very <laughs> ironic, isn't it? Uh, I mean, we're seeing maybe some soldiers taking money out of their own pockets most likely purchasing a product and in the end this product is actually maybe even killing soldiers in Afghanistan, our own soldiers. Quite incredible. Great work in exposing this. By the way, any politicians and figures in authority responding to this? Will something be done? Um, for now, there's not a lot of signs. I had an interaction with some uh, a politician that is extremely concerned and here's, here's another thing, uh, Mr. Corrin. We know that in France there's been a major massacre, a major slaughter by this so-called lone wolf. Mm. But the French government just a couple of days ago uh, just uh, published a press release and they specifically targeted some of the ideologues that were basically promoting hate speech or promoting uh, uh, ideology that could, you know, create some of these lone wolves. And some of these people that were naming them, one of them, there's three of them. There was Tariq Ramadan that was on, on the list. There was Yusuf Karadawi. If people don't know who Yusuf Karadawi, they should start reading about him. Yep. It could be comparable to who the Ayatollah Khomeini was before the Iranian uh, revolution. Mm -hmm. uh, the third one was a man by Ikrima Sabri. Now, the MAC invited Ikrima Sabri, who is now officially banned from entering France. Um, basically, this man said, and I'm going to paraphrase here uh, on, 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 on uh, a national TV, he says that the younger the martyr or the suicide bomber is, the more it touches his heart, the more it inspires the community. These are the types of uh, education and ideology that they're spreading. The MAC also manages schools, youth camps. Wow. Uh, there's a history also where they, they manage the Abrar schools. Uh, uh, even The Guardian noticed that uh, there was a, uh, a journalist that, that, that covered a story where they, the, the, the teachers a couple of years ago were encouraging uh, the students to talk about uh, anti-Jewish, even calling about killing some Jews uh, on some of the uh, students' projects. Uh, we're talking about an ideology here. Maybe we're putting it too much emphasis on terrorism and not enough on the ideology yes. that is actually producing what France has just been through. Yes, I, I agree. that This is fascinating. It really is. We, we must have you back on the show, and, and let's try and influence politicians to, to change this. Thank you I, so very much. I, I, I invite the readers, if they okay. want to go through our, yes, our, our report, it's in English on Point de Bascule, which is if you translate it into tipping point, tipping point yeah. and, and the article should be uh, one of the featured articles. Okay, marvelous. We'll have in you English. back. Thank you again so very much indeed. Thank you, Mr. Corrin.